What's good, Revs fam? My name's Chris, and welcome to a Revs Revolt Predictions video. Alright, that's right. MLS is back. Yes, we had the draw. I did a live stream over on Twitter uh, reacting to the draw live. Um, obviously, it's a live stream. I did that live. <laughs> it's how you do those things. And uh, anyway, so we went through, we found out the Revs are going to be in Group C along with Toronto, uh, DC United, and Montreal. So we got the Canadian, uh, the two Canadian East teams and uh, our rivals down uh, in DC. Uh, so this video, I'm going to go jump right into it. We're going to look at the group stage and predict what I think is going to be the the final places for uh, for each group. So the way it's going to work, uh, you'll see it in a second. I'll bring it up on the screen. And we're going to run through uh, Eastern Conference first, groups A, C, and E. Uh, I'll give you the last place teams and we'll work our way up to the top. Uh, and then again through the West. Now, there's not a whole lot of information disclosed as far as how the seeding is going to work once we get past the group stage. So I'm going to split this up into a two-part video. I'll do a uh, my second part whenever they announce what the seeding is going to be like. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, you see now on the screen, here is the group stage standings with no teams listed of course uh, I've gone through and selected every single uh, group stage I didn't play out every match in my head uh, I just played who I think is going to have the best chance of winning uh, with the teams in the group uh, I'm going to kick things off let's go to group A and honestly it's you know there's always going to be a group of death and we'll get to what the group of death is going to be it's definitely not group A group A has got to be one of the softest groups I've ever seen that being said it's going to be also one of the hardest groups to get out of because it's the only group that has six teams in it. And with six teams, it's also the hardest group to predict because every single team is still only playing three matches and they're going to have a completely different schedule. So of all the groups, I'm probably not going to get a single group correct. Uh, but if I get any of them, if I get all of them correct, uh, I don't know. That would be a miracle. But group A is one that's definitely not going to be correct. Let's just say that right now. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. I'm going to start off, the team that's going to finish last in Group A is going to be Nashville. Uh, Nashville SC, of course, brand new team to MLS. Uh, they've only played two matches so far and not really showing me a whole lot to think that they're going to be able to advance far. They've made some great signings. I shouldn't say great, you know, I, I use that word very loosely very often, but it, they've made some signings at least. Uh, you know, they got Walker Zimmerman. Zimmerman uh, from LAFC, which was a great pull, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's it's still not going to be enough. They don't have that raw next level talent that's really going to put them over the top. Um, and then after that, I'm going to go enter Miami. Uh, I could see Miami surprising a lot of people and actually making a run and possibly uh, qualifying for the knockout stage. But my prediction it's not really going to happen. Um, you know, they got some good players. You know, they got Pizarro, of course, uh, who's going to be really difficult. But it's still a very new team, uh, and they've only had two games together, and then the pandemic messed everything up. Um, it's it's going to be a very raw team again. Um, so, yeah, they're not going to be getting, getting out of Group A. Let's just say that. After that, I got Chicago Fire. I know... Uh, quite a few Chicago Fire fans aren't going to be happy that I'm putting them in fourth, but a lot of New England fans like myself are going to be happy to see them in fourth because, one, that's where they belong, and two, we don't want to see them win anything. Uh, yeah, Chicago Fire, I mean, we've already seen them once this year. We saw what they can do. Uh, it was a, the one-all draw back, what was it, first game of March, I think, March 6th, March 7th, something like that. Um, and that was the last time we saw any live soccer. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Robert Barrich, I think is his name, uh, their new signing, their new DP striker. Uh, he looks, he looks really good. Um, but it's, uh, it's not enough to put them over the top. Uh, Chicago Fire, your fourth. In third is Orlando City. And I had, a, I had a lot of trouble where to place Orlando City in this. 
if they get the right matchup, they can be last. If their schedule ends up being very soft, they can, I wouldn't say top the group, but they're going to come up pretty high. So I knew to, th I wanted to throw them in the middle and I figure, you know, there's a good chance Orlando's going to be making it through to the knockout round. So Orlando City, you get third, um, mostly because it's your, it's your hometown and the hosts. Uh, second place, Group A, NYCFC, uh, all the, all the coaching changes, everything like that, it's really hard to get a team consistently playing well with that much turnover at the head coach position. Um, so that's why I have them second instead of first. Uh, Talent-wise, they're number one in this group. But that leaves, of course, Philadelphia Union. I picked to win Group A. Uh, and I don't think I need to explain too much about why. You know, it's probably the best team uh, as far as cohesion. Cohesion. Uh in MLS. Uh, maybe not in MLS, but it's up there. They're, they're a strong team, that's for sure. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that's going to disagree with that. All right, on to Group C, the Revs group. And I'm going to talk most about this group because this is where the Revs are. Um, let's go down to the bottom. I'm going to say Montreal Impact. <laughs> um, <laughs> like... Yeah, okay, we lost to Montreal. It probably should have been a draw, um, except for that Tejan Buchanan header off the post. Um, I don't really want to talk about that one anymore. But don't sleep on Montreal is what I've been saying on Twitter if you follow me on Twitter. And I am sticking by that 100%. In this group, this is a really hard group to get out of. It's not the group of death. But this is going to be a very hard group to get out of. Yeah, in Montreal, they've made some great signings lately. Thierry Henry, if he can become a coach anywhere near the caliber of player he was, uh, Montreal's got one hell of a future coming up. But for this tournament, MLS is back. Montreal, you're sitting fourth. You're not making knockouts. Uh, third place, DC United. Uh, I I don't know what to say about DC. I mean, yeah, yeah, they got some some good young talent but man I don't know last year they were just a mess and now losing Rooney and Acosta and I'm forgetting his name uh, but he's out injured right now uh, is Ariola Paul Ariola and he won't be back until October October 24th I think was the best case scenario date so Paul Ariola is not back this team is hurting they're struggling they're in third place that brings us to the top two, the ones that are making it through to the knockout round. I have New England finishing second because I am not confident that they can win the group. They obviously can. I think any team in this group can win the group. But uh, I'm not confident they can win, but I'm, I'm confident that they can make it to a knockout match. It's going to be really interesting to see what sort of lineup Bruce rolls out uh, in July. And we have a lot of different pieces that can play different areas. A lot of versatility going on. Uh, but I'm hoping to see a lot of these players that were injured at the beginning of the year actually make it out onto the pitch. Uh, you know, talking, of course, Carlos Hill. We're talking uh, Alexander Butner and uh, Tony Delamea. Tony Delamea is going to be out there. Of course, we won't have Luis Caicedo, so it'll be uh, something that Bruce has to address to fill that sixth spot. Um, I'm guessing Zahibo is going to be the other mainstay there. But uh, yeah, so that leaves Toronto FC up top. I mean, you kind of have to leave Toronto in there, right? As the favorites to win, to win the group, and you know they have the talent to do it. Alejandro Pozuelo is probably the scariest person uh, in the league, and Toronto. Maybe not in the league. That's an exaggeration, but he's one of the scariest people on that team for sure. And uh, he can make something out of nothing in the blink of an eye, uh, especially his uh, his long range shots, his long range curlers. Um, yeah, he lit he lit the league on fire last year. Not as well as Carles Hugh, but um, yeah, Pasuelo is a difference maker for that team. And then they still have the likes of Josie Altador and Michael Bradley. He's not the Michael Bradley of years past, and even the Michael Bradley of years past, I still will say is not the best example of what you want for a six. He's a fine player, but 
let's leave it at that. Uh, yeah, they've, they're a strong team. Of course they are. Uh, MLS Cup runners-up last year, if I have the year correct. It's, they're in their in they're in the MLS Cup way too often. Um, so I'm pretty sure it was Toronto FC and Seattle last year because they made the the three peat for that matchup. But anyway, Toronto FC is winning Group C in my predictions. Moving on, we got Group E, the final group in the Eastern Conference. Down the bottom, Cincinnati. I mean, what a train wreck last year, <laughs> and I don't see things getting any better. I'm just not going to get any further. Uh, New York Red Bulls coming in third. This group is extremely hard. Uh, I think this is the toughest group in the East, uh, even though it has the layup of Cincinnati. But having that layup is like almost guaranteeing one win for every other team in the group. Uh, New York Red Bulls getting one win and two losses. Uh, and I, they lost way too many key pieces and didn't do enough to make me think that they're going to be even relevant this year. Uh, they'll probably prove me wrong. They always do. But, uh, yeah, New York Red Bulls, third place. And then going up, second place, Atlanta United. Uh, you know, Joseph Martinez is not going to be there. Um, and so you're going to be relying on Pity and... Maybe Darlington Nabby, Nagby, and they're going to score goals. They're going to do good. They're not going to win the group. Top of the group, Group E, is Columbus Crew. Um, that team has just been so strong despite not having a roster that really jumps out as being one of the best. Um, but yeah, Columbus Crew, somehow they always get it done, and so I'm not doubting them putting them top of Group C. Uh, group E, rather. All right, let's move over to the West. Uh, group B, we're going to jump through these a little bit quicker. This video is getting a bit longer than I wanted. So, Group B, uh, down the bottom, Vancouver Whitecaps. Again, jumping back to last year, pretty much a train wreck. Um, their, their, new, their signing last year, oh gosh, it's, his name is eluding me. But it's it's all they have right now. I, I don't know. I, I don't have any faith in Vancouver doing anything. Bottom of the group. Uh, moving up, Dallas. Again, another team that I don't really see doing much. Except this team, uh, Dallas, I always see having the talent to possibly be a front runner in the West. And then never doing anything. Uh, in my opinion, they're always underperforming. And they will not fail to do that again in this tournament. Moving up, San Jose coming in second place in Group B. And Seattle Sounders rounding it out on top, of course. Uh, group D. Colorado Rapids in the bottom. I mean, I said the same thing for Vancouver. Colorado is... I, I have a bit more faith in Colorado, I guess, than Vancouver, but not a whole lot. Um, I, I, I don't know what they're doing out there in Dick Sporting Good Park or whatever it's called now. I think they've renamed it. Um, yeah. I... I don't have anything to say about Colorado. That's really about it. Uh, coming up, I got RSL, and RSL had a really strong 2019 campaign. I think it was more flash in the pan. And, yeah, okay, you got some great young talent. You got some uh, some speedy players with uh, pretty good skill on the ball, but I don't know. This team, it, it really it just feels flash in the pan to me, so... Yep, RSL, third, and Group D. Uh, moving on up, Sporting KC coming in second, Minnesota taking the group. Uh, and it was really tough between Minnesota and Sporting because I think both of these teams are going to, one of these two teams are going to win the group for sure. And I just gave the edge to Minnesota only because it feels like Sporting KC is still trying to figure out what's going on after a really awkward 2019 campaign. And to round out the whole tournament group f i call group f my group of death and houston dynamo you are the victims of the group of death um you have three really strong teams and then you have houston dynamo sorry houston uh lafc is taking third place in group f and that's only because there's probably not going to be a carlos Ve carlos vea there 
and they've lost Lee Wynn, they've lost uh, uh, Walker Zimmerman. Lee Wynn wasn't really a big impact for them last year, but he was a good depth piece. Walker Zimmerman was a huge piece for them last year, uh, and he, he's not going to be there. So those are, those are two big holes to fill, and who's going to be – what path are they going to be playing the ball through in order to get the goals that they that Carlos Vela puts up, I don't know. So, I think they're still do okay, but third place, which means LA Galaxy I have coming in second. Um, Chicharito's probably gonna be playing. I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Uh, so yeah, I, I I don't think Galaxy are winning this, and um. I can't put them below LAFC right now because I feel like LAFC has a bit more question marks. And then Portland, of course, coming out on top. Portland always seems up for a tournament. I don't care what the tournament is. You, you, any, see any tournament that has MLS teams in it and Portland's in it, you're going to see them making their way towards the final, at least the quarterfinals. So Portland Timbers or a shoe in to win Group F for me. So that means in the East, we're going to have Philadelphia, New York City, Toronto FC, New England Revolution, Columbus Crew, and Atlanta United going through. And then two third place teams make it. Between the Red Bulls, Orlando City, and DC United, I'm going to say DC is the team that does not make it out of those third place teams. With Group A having six teams, you're almost guaranteed to have the third place team be one of the two third place teams in the East uh, advance. And so that comes down to, is it going to be New York Red Bulls or D.C. United? And it's New York Red Bulls to me. D.C. doesn't have it. Um, and so now let's go over to the West. The third place teams we're looking at, we have LAFC, RSL, and Dallas. And it's going to be Group D and Group F getting third place teams through. RSL and LAFC are making it. And that's what I got. Those are my predictions. Please let me know where I'm wrong. Please let me know what you think. Get involved. And if you ever want to reach out to me, please find me on Twitter at Revolt or send me an email, RevsRevolt at gmail.com. And if you like this video, please drop a like. Let me know you like what I'm putting out. Uh, it's a bit of a different format this time. I'm in my basement and I'm moving, so there's crap everywhere. So apologies for that. But uh, you've got to do what you got to do. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. I'll be putting up videos weekly. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll catch you later.